Wow, this is exciting because this is the first ever video on YouTube where I'm going to be sharing all things business and branding. Although I've built a highly successful company and brand over the last 10 years. Before I spill the tea, if you're someone who's just starting out or if you're in your the first one to five years of business and if you are ready to stand out in your niche, you're going to love all the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video and the videos to follow. Now, if you don't know who I am, a quick introduction. My name is Arabelle, entrepreneur, single mom, and a multifaceted human being who loves all things business and spirituality. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing you tips on how you can discover your authentic brand. So let's dive straight in. What is authentic branding? Now, for a lot of people, when they start thinking about branding, they start looking at what's my logo? Should I build a website? Do I need to choose colors? colors and fonts? Do I need to do photo shoots? And all of those are really important. However, for a personal brand, in my opinion, what's really important is your brand should be a reflection and your brand should be able to express who you are as a person, your core values, your personal journey. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing right now. Because here's the thing, people buy from people. I'm sure you've heard of this already, right? And people don't buy from companies that they don't trust unless it's a transaction where you just go to a grocery store and buy something. And even then you go to the grocery store that you already have built trust in a relationship with. And that's what branding does for you. It creates these genuine connections with your audience. Now I'm going to be breaking down little steps in a bit. Now in there, you're going to also see why that genuine connection is so important. But most importantly, you've heard of this term, your vibe attracts your tribe. And that's exactly what we want. We don't want to show up online as this curated persona, but you want to show up as you with flaws and all. And I say that the journey of branding is not so much the technical stuff, but more about the self-discovery. And with that, let's go into step number one, which is self-discovery. Now, in the last year of building my personal brand, it truly has been a self-discovery process because I remember the first time I went onto a stage that was pretty much like in the first year of me starting this business and I practiced the speech, I practiced everything that I needed to say, and I think I did a really good job. However, after that, the feedback from everyone was the same thing. And it was that, Arabelle, your stage presence was great. Everything was great. These, there's only one thing missing, and that was emotional connection. And that's when I realized that in order for me to really speak and share my brand and build my brand, I need to be able to connect to every single part of me. And it's been a journey. You never really get there as in there's no final destination, but it's a process of refinement and little attunements. So when I say self-discovery, I want you to think about what's your story? How did you get here? Now, I want to share a very collapsed version of my story and my journey of how I got here. Now, before uh, this 10 year stint of building and scaling my company and my brand, I was in the corporate world. I started out in the oil and gas industry, and then I moved on to investment banking. And I remember in the last stint of my career, I was starting to feel this itchiness, this, this niggling feeling. I don't know if that's even a word, niggling, right? Um, this feeling inside of myself. And I call it a soul nudge. I call it spirit knocking from within. And spirit has been knocking for a while, asking me to reflect on my journey so far. Because growing up in Burma and being where I was at the time, I've done all the right things. I've taken the steps that were laid out in front of me by the people who walked this path before me. So I went to school, I got good grades, I got into the medical school, I didn't want to become a doctor, so I decided to do something else. I got two bachelor degrees, I got master's degrees, and then I got into the corporate job, and I climbed up the ladder, I earned a really good money, I bought my first property, it was all good, right? And then I asked myself, what was the next step? And this was the moment that really started this journey. And it was that day where we had a huge celebration at work. We were all invited, all of us who were working tirelessly over this huge million dollar project. And we were gathering in the lobby and there was this gigantic screen on the wall and they showed us the success of this project. And then everyone was clapping and screaming and with joy, right? Because it was such a big success. And yet I found myself in the back of the room feeling frustrated and empty and I couldn't ignore it anymore, this void inside of myself. And that day I went back home and I lied in, down in my bed. I looked at the ceiling and I started asking myself the right questions. I started asking myself, What's more for me? Is this the path that I really want to walk? What would really light me up? What is this empty feeling when I have everything that I was told I needed to have? 
And that was when I realized that everything was great. Money was great. Korea was great. I got my first home, but I didn't feel fulfilled. And that was when I started doing the self discovery journey. And I realized that I'm actually good with people, working with people. People come to me with their deepest, darkest secrets and desires and fears that they wouldn't otherwise communicate to other people. And that's how I started as a therapist because I didn't know what else to do. I tell this story because it's part of my self-discovery journey. And in order for me to be able to tell this story, not like a guru, not like an expert storyteller, but as me, as Arabelle, in the way that I can do well, what starts to happen was it starts to give permission to my audience, to my community to reflect on their lives, to reflect on their choices. And for those who were at the crossroads, not even just in their careers, but in their marriage, in their relationships, in their life in general, they started asking themselves the same questions. What would really light me up? What would make me feel fulfilled? Why do I feel this void, even though externally I have everything that I needed? And that's what it does when you dive deep into your own self-discovery journey, because that allows you to connect to your audience. So for step number one, what I want you to do is I want you to go back and start writing. What's my story? How did I get here? What do I want to share people with? Now, from there, step number two is finding out what your core values are. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't know what my core values were when I first started. I didn't even know what branding was. I didn't know what brand voice was, let alone core values. So yes, we figured it all out along the way through trial and error. But then what I also found along the way, pretty much in the early days, was Dr. Demartini's values determination method. It is so good. I've probably done it about three to four times now over the last 10 years. And it's so interesting to see my values change and shift over time. And I highly recommend that you do that too. And the reason is, if it's a personal brand, and if you are building a brand, that's going to be able to connect deeply with your audience. If you want to stand out in your niche, if you want to dominate your market through solid branding without complicated funnels or ads, this is the way to do it. So when we find out what our core values were, by the way, it got refined over time. Now we have a list of core values that we communicate regularly in the team meetings and to the team. And we also do rewards and recognitions to the team members who portray these core values. So here are some of our core values. Number one is self-leadership. I value self-leadership so much because I myself have gone through the roller coaster of life and business, the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. And in order for me to be able to navigate all of that, I need to have self-leadership, the ability to lead myself so very powerfully that I get to, I have the courage to walk with pain and power, because let's face it, whichever path you choose, whichever level you're at, it doesn't matter how much you're earning, there's always going to be challenges as well as the wins. And so in order for us to walk with both powerfully with our head held high, we need to have that self-leadership. And I encourage this and emphasize this a lot in the team. Now, another core value that we have is creativity. Because in my opinion, it doesn't matter whether you're an entrepreneur or a coach, uh, we all need to be creative because at some point on this journey of building and scaling a very successful business and brand, we're all going to experience some kind of hiccup along the way. And we need to learn to pivot. And when we learn to pivot, we can't just go and buy a cookie cutter approach. Uh, we need to get creative to see which way, like all the doors are closing, all the walls are caving in. How can I actually create a way where we can pivot really fast, really successfully? We've done it back in 2020. We've done it in 2021. We've done it in 2023. And we're doing yet again now in 2024 also. So for step number two, I want you to go ahead and do Dr. John Demartini's values determination exercise if you don't know what your core values are. And then ask yourself, how can I incorporate these values in my branding so that in the beginning, yes, you may need to continuously communicate your values, but after a while, your brand as well as you embody these values so well, it is literally integrated in your brand DNA that every single thing that you put out, whether it's an Instagram post, whether it's a graphic, whether it's a video for YouTube, whether it's a program, whatever it is, your values are embedded deeply in there. Now, from there, the next step is step number three, storytelling. I have to say, this is one of my favorite tools. And like I said, I built my entire company and my personal brand to where we are now. Recently, we celebrated $30 million in collective revenue that I have helped generate my clients. And we've also reached 122 countries globally. We have 40,000 students all over the world. And from us to be able to build this as a solo mother, not with complicated ads or funnels, but by telling my story, not like a guru, not like an expert, but in a way that I know how to do. So you probably already know 
the power of storytelling. The first thing that it does is that it creates this emotional connection. Now, remember the story that I told you the first time that I spoke on a stage? I spoke like a robot. I memorized, I rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed a thousand times that I delivered every single point that I needed to deliver. But the biggest thing was missing, and that was me connecting to my story emotionally. And that's why I said it's a journey of self-discovery because in order for me to be able to tell the story, I need to go into the depth of my psyche, the crevices of my consciousness and pull out all these memories and tell those stories, not from a place of a victim, but from a place of extracting these lessons and yet still be able to connect to those emotions. And when you do that, it's going to give permission to your audience to feel their own emotions too. And also it's going to create an emotional connection with you and your audience. Now from there, if you tell a story well enough, it's going to create engagement. These days, we're not fighting with competitors. We're fighting for attention. Everybody loves a two seconds, three seconds, six seconds reel. But if it's anything longer than that, like this YouTube video, and if you're still watching this video, thank you for having such a long span attention, right? Because these days we're fighting for attention. And so in order to retain that attention, you've got to be able to engage to your audience. Now, I want you to think about this. When was the last time you actually showed up, whether it's on social media or among your community or with your friends, and then you start saying something and people just switch off because they're not interested in what you're sharing. And then you feel unseen and unheard. Now we can change that. It's about you really feeling those emotions because I'll tell you this, I have run so many events and retreats in the last 10 years. And I've had people from five people to 800 people in my events. Now, in order for me to be able to engage people. I've got to tell stories and I've got to really think of what's in it for them. And then before I even run these events and workshops, the one question that I always ask myself is how do I want people to feel at the end of the day or at the end of this event? Because the feeling is what we remember, not the content, not the techniques, not what was given out. It's the feeling. And if you can create that feeling in your audience, they're going to remember you. Now, another thing is you're going to be able to retain people a lot longer. In my business, customer lifetime value and the retention rate is really high. We've been able to do that simply by connecting with them deeply. And I tell stories all the time, even in my team meetings, because the truth is who doesn't love a good story? Now, another thing is if you can tell a story well enough, and if you can allow yourself to go into those parts of you and pull out all these parts of you and really express that through words and through gestures and through passion, it's going to create an, a positive influence on your community too. Now, the last thing is, of course, if we can do all of these points, you're going to build trust with your audience. Now, I do have a brand guide where I teach you step by step with case studies, how you can build your own powerful story. Now, you can download that. You can get access to that. And I'm going to mention that another time. Just remember that I do have a brand guide, but I want to now move on to the last step, which is step number four, building trust through transparency. As you probably know, nowadays, people are like even on Instagram, right? People are not really vibing with polished content anymore. The more you show up on a selfie, the more you show up uh, while you're cooking or cleaning or making coffee, people are vibing with it more because they feel it's where they can really connect to this person behind the camera. They can really see it, it creates a certain level of transparency. And I know, yes, there are many curated content that looks like they just woke up, but then, you know, they had to prepare for hours to get that perfect shot. I get it. But psychologically, people are looking for transparency. I'll share with you a very short version of a story of my story that happened a couple of years ago. It was a point in our business where we were literally skyrocketing at a rate that we were really finding it hard to catch up, but it was a good problem to have. We were so busy, but we didn't have the processes and the, the team or the skills in place. And we were all over the place, which meant we were super busy and we didn't see what was coming. And what was coming was a group of women who for some reason didn't like me and they started attacking me online personally not with my work and they it got so out of hand and it got so big uh, they started canceling me publicly and a lot of other people jumped on this bandwagon and it got so bad because they started pulling out photos of my family members and they somehow got hold of the address of the house that i was living at at the time and they started circulating it it got really out of hand. It was really, really scary. And to be honest, at, in that point, I actually wanted to quit because in my head, all I was thinking of was, I all I've been doing was helping people and I get to see people's lives getting changed. And why are they so angry? Why are they so nasty, right? 
but then I decided to handle it publicly. I know that I probably would have handled it in a different way now, but that was baby Arabelle. And I showed up online on a live stream and I started uh, handling the whole situation. And basically I was explaining and I just felt like I owe it to my community. And I started crying. And up until that point, people have never seen that vulnerable side of me. So the good thing that came out of that situation was I was really transparent with where I was and my situation and what I was feeling. Because there were many people in the community who thought that I would be immune to this, that I wouldn't be crying, I wouldn't be all over the place. And they saw that I was all over the place. I was very hurt. And that allows them to see me in a different light. Although that wasn't my plan. I didn't have a strategy. I just literally showed up online. And so people saw the, the transparency and that created a deeper bond with me and my community, right? And so I'm not telling you to go online and start crying, but what I am saying is, if there are things that you know, talk about it. And if there are things that you don't know, tell them you don't know. If you are going through a tough situation right now, you can talk about it. But what I suggest to people is that never tell a story while you're still in it because you haven't fully processed it yet and you might be projecting it onto your audience too. So for step number four, storytelling, it's a whole different ball game but from this video what i would like you to do is i want you to start thinking of what are the stories that i can share with my audience now if you're someone who's feeling like arabelle i don't really have a story i don't have rags to riches story i've never gone through a tragic experience you don't need any of that and in my brand guide training, even if you grew up with a couple of siblings and you had to fight for ice cream, which sounds like a very insignificant story to be telling an audience or as part of your brand, it is very significant because even fighting for ice cream, it can create this resilience in you and how you grew up with this mentality, lack mentality that there is never enough going around for everybody. And whatever story that you have, there is power in it. So I want you to start ponder on all of that. So now what I want you to do after watching this video, I want you to go away and work on step number one, two, three, four. And then if you want to go deeper on this journey, I do have a free brand checklist and you get to download that instantly. Or if you want to work on your storytelling skills, I have a brand guide too. I'm going to put the links down below and I will see you in another video.